my wife and I and my grandparents and my parents, we all planted this. These, uh, there's 144 vines right here in the small little corner, not all the way up right there to that wood post. That's where it cut off. The original planting was basically the uh, Independence Day weekend 2004. We just had this uh, intermediate grass here and we just mowed it off and augered holes in and stuck them in the ground and watered them. It took a long time for them to grow up enough because the ground here is so hard. They had to kind of drill through it with the roots. That first year, I just, we didn't know anything. My grandfather, he went to the library and, you know, got books for the uh, vineyard. That was probably the first time he'd been in the library since, since he was at Oregon State before the Korean War. <laughs> so, and he, he's still really excited about it. He maintains the rows, he, you know, mows when the, uh, when the grass gets tall and we try to keep the weeds at bay a little bit, but he does all the irrigating for me and he's kind of my, my on-site vineyard manager. <laughs> We're the highest elevation vineyard in the state of Oregon at 3,400 feet. Probably the only uh, natural gravity fed spring water irrigated vineyard in the state as well. <laughs> so it, it makes it kind of fun. When I'm doing uh, wine sales and such, it's fun to, uh, to tell people that. And they're like, wow, that's so cool because the, the whole green movement right now and you know, saving energy and all of that stuff is, is uh, getting to be you know, a, a huge priority in everybody's lifestyle. So it's, uh, it's fun to say, well, I, I can say I do that a little bit. <laughs> so when, these, uh, when the Cabernet Sauvignon like this is just starting to turn color, it uh, tastes like a green bell pepper, really vegetal kind of bitter too. It, it, when it's really peppery like that, you could mix it really well with spaghetti sauce, but I wouldn't recommend drinking it. I came back today because I need to get a couple pictures for the painting I'm working up. And uh, just I just need a few shots. Um, mostly I'll work for my imagination, but <laughs> the imagination kind of runs dry sometimes and I need, I can only make up so many things about what leaves are doing, grape leaves are doing. So I need to have some really good shots of leaves to uh, inspire me to, you know, to do something other than just what's stuck in my head. Hey, bunny. Oh yeah, that's a jackrabbit. On either side of the painting will be uh, um, grapevines coming up and then hanging over like that, kind of framing in the sides of the painting. And that's what I'm looking for now, that uh, uh, something that'll give me shots of, of leaves that I can adapt to that kind of a look. This is beautiful. In fact, I will take one of that. Just the way it tapers is lovely. Look at how, how they're turning color right now. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at them, boy, they're just so, they were just all green last week. Look at, wow, that is so cool. I get to uh, uh, be with these grapes and, and take these photographs and just do all this to inspire my imagination. Now I'll go sit in my little corner and create a painting. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be what I love to do and, and what I've done for 40 years now. Ah, oh, it's too beautiful. It was just still really loose in my head, but as soon as I blocked in those grape leaves, I could see it, and there, <laughs> and there just started falling together. I'm <laughs> I've only been working on it a week, and I'm really surprised at, at the progress. Sometimes it takes weeks and weeks. This one's going to take just week and week. <laughs> I love having roads. They go somewhere, and they uh, invite you along. <laughs> They make it accessible, like, oh, well, I could be in that grape country. There's a chair, I can sit in the chair. There's a glass, I can pick up the glass. And there's a road, that's how I got there. It starts to tell a story. The work becomes 
pretty illustrative. I guess I'm a, as much an illustrator as I am a fine arts painter. It's getting to the point where it's, it's really getting fun because now things are starting to happen. This isn't just a wine glass now, it's a wine glass in relation to that green and that green and this red and these little reds in the grapes. Now they all start to talk to each other and say, oh, I need to be brighter. Oh, no, I need to quiet down. <laughs> they let me know what to do. I don't do squat. I just sit here and listen to the painting it tells me. People say, oh, you're a good painter. I go, no, you just got to listen. <laughs> when you get into that state of oneness with with, with the object that's, that uh, you're inspired by, a tree, or in this case, the wine scene. One thing that happens when you're in that state of oneness is you're so connected and you're so open and vulnerable, that's when source, God, creator, whatever you want to call it, I call it source, that's when source flows through you into this planet, into this dimension, into this place. And that is very key. And you can feel it when it happens. That you just feel so good. You're totally at peace. And as the Buddhists say, um, next to peace, even happiness is such a little thing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I think that's just beautiful. And that's what, maybe that's what we're here for, right? I don't know.